Amen. Thank you very much. Praise God. Lift your hands to the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you. Give you praise. It is in the name of Jesus that we approach you, approach your throne. You've made every effort, and it all it culminates in Jesus to get us back into your presence, into right standing, into fellowship with you. I thank you because I know what you've done in my life. I can't speak for others, but I can say from my heart, thank you very much. And we're not done yet. So I ask, Father, that your presence, your anointing will rest upon your people today. Let them have ears to hear and eyes to see as you give me the ability to speak as an oracle of God. I just declare right now, Father, that there will be no hindrance, no outside force, no interruption by, the, by satanic forces that would cause us to miss what you have for us today. We've come to this point in the service where we're ready to hear your word. So anoint me. And I just thank you, God, that you are the great healer. You are that one. That's who you are. Among many things, you are the healer of our bodies, the healer of our minds, and the healer of our souls. We declare that to be so in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Certainly glad that you're here today. I want to take an opportunity to greet our YouTube audience, those of you watching by live stream or watching later on. We thank you for tuning in. We are located at 1221st Avenue in the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center. Thank you so much for just uh, having the uh, foresight to hear the Holy Spirit to tune in today. We trust that you'll be blessed. We just invite you to just open your eyes, open your ears, uh, have an open heart, get a Bible, get something to follow along with, get something to take notes with, and we trust that you'll be blessed. We are located at 1221st Avenue in the city of Coralville, Iowa, just off of I-80. We welcome you down here, plenty of room for you. LifePoint Christian Faith Center, would you welcome our YouTube audience. Amen. Also want to take an opportunity to just say hello to those of you who are continuing guests and visitors. I call you guests more than I do visitors because guests to me have more privileges than visitors. So uh, if you're here and you're making a decision, you're believing God that it's time for you to be in a church uh, and have a covering over your life, we think Life Point's a pretty cool place to make that decision. So we invite you to just hear the Lord. Let the Lord speak to your heart. Uh, I can guarantee you it's a safe place. We work overtime to keep the presence of God and the power of the Holy Ghost operating in this place. So welcome our first time guests. Would you do that? And our returning guests. Amen. Amen. Certainly, again, I'm grateful to my brother. Pastor Randy, his wife Pam is not with him today, but uh, Three Degrees Ministries, he's launching some great things for the kingdom. And uh, if you haven't met him, I, take, I, I encourage you, take an opportunity to say hello to him. He's, a, he's been here before. How many of you remember Pastor Randy? Yeah, in our old building. He was there with us and uh, filled in for my wife and I. He reminded us that when he came, we were on a boat. Uh, <laughs> kind of forgot that, but I think we were on a cruise that year. And, and so he came and helped us out, and we appreciate that. Love you, brother. Certainly love you. Thank you very much for being here. Are you ready for the word this morning? Yeah. Wanna, I'm going to invite your careful consideration and attention to the book of Genesis. Just turn to Genesis. Hold on there. And I want to share a couple things as an introduction. Uh, we are and we have been talking for some time and will continue on as the Lord leads me to talk about learning the potential in every seed during this year and during this time frame. The seed, say seed, the seed is what God uses. God never does anything without seed. Say amen to that. He never does anything without seed. Seed is crucial to the advancement of the kingdom. It's also crucial to the advancement of your life. So God's plan, and I'll prove it to you in just a minute, is to continue on by using seed, not just seed time and harvest, but seed to be able to carry out the plan in the earth. Okay. So from Genesis 2, I'm going to just do this by way of review. We talked a little bit about this yesterday, and I'm going to get to my jumping off point in just a minute. But I want to just for the sake of those who maybe were not here last week or didn't hear the message, uh, I want to make sure that I just do a quick, quick review. Is that OK? Just to make sure that we are all on the same page. I don't want you to just jump in mid sentence and not understand where I'm at. So from Genesis, the second chapter, and I'm reading from the expanded Bible. Genesis, the second chapter, and the 15th verse, reading from the expanded Bible. If you have it, say amen. Now, they'll put it up on the, on the screen in just a bit, but I'm going to go ahead just for sake of time and jump in. The Lord God took and put the man, or Adam, 
in the Garden of Eden to care for it or to till it, it says, and to work or look after it. Verse 16, the Lord God commanded him, you may eat the fruit from any tree or all trees, in essence, in the garden, but you must not eat the fruit from the tree which gives the knowledge of good and evil. So we determined last time that Adam's eating from that tree would cause Adam to be a determiner, right? A determiner of his own destiny. Anytime you step outside of the, the will of God for your life and the plan of God for your life and choose a different path, you have just become the determiner of your destiny. Yes. Are you hearing me this morning? Okay. So it's very important that we know, we teach this here, that we know the voice of God because the voice of God and, the, and uh, Hebrews uh, 11, is, no, Hebrews 1 says that in sundry times and in diverse manners, God spoke before by his prophets. But it also says that God is now speaking through his son. And the high priestly ministry of Jesus is something that we've not fully understood. But in essence, let's suffice it to say that the same plan that God had in the beginning, he has now. It has not changed. No matter the world situation, no matter the world condition, it has not changed. Now, the greatest voice that you will hear in our lifetime is going to be the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's why anybody that has not uh, encouraged you, or even in some cases, you know, here at LifePoint, we, we almost make it, well, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to bite my tongue here. We make it mandatory to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, to be a partner. Come on, don't get quiet on me. That's not meaning that you can't come and not be baptized in the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to tell you that the voice of the Holy Spirit is what's going to get you out of the situation and keep you out of those situations <laughs> as you learn to hear his voice and to be obedient to it. Amen. Say amen. So that's why we don't do it for our benefit. We do it for yours because the Holy Spirit is the greatest voice. Say that with me. The Holy Spirit is the greatest voice that I will ever hear. OK, uh, now that's true. All right. So. We're not going to be determiners of our own destinies. So the second thing we learned from this is that uh, the information that the, the certifies that the information or spirit revelation from God was greater than what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil could teach him. In other words, Adam did not need to touch the tree because everything he needed to know God was telling him. And I said last week, and I say this to you again, you don't need to go to outside sources. You need to go to God's word. And if you can't read, you need to get in prayer. There's no excuse for not growing in God because God is going to find whatever means necessary to reach each one of us at the point of necessity for him. OK. All right. So we have no excuse. We have no nothing to justify our lack of growth. We have nothing to justify our, our getting away from God. You've heard me say this time and time again. God hates self-reliance. Are you listening? He does not want you meeting your own needs. I'll stop right there because that could lead me down a rabbit trail that I don't want to go on. So the next thing we talked about is the knowledge and the idea of death or the concept of death was not a part of Adam's destiny. OK, Adam did not know anything about death. Other than what God had told him, he said that in the day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. And Adam, you notice I said this last week, notice Adam did not say, well, what's death? It didn't matter because it was not part of who he was. God had already covered that aspect of it. So what happens is he doesn't need to know what death is until he disobeys God. Do you see that? We also see here, and we said this, that death was not intended for Adam, nor was it intended for you and I in God's original plan. Are you listening this morning? Is this making sense? Y'all remember that? Okay, so why? Because God had to tell him about death. If death was a part of him, God wouldn't have had to tell him about death. It would have just been part of the process. Tree would have meant nothing. Just live your life and eventually you will die. Do you see the difference? So the introduction of the word death or you shall surely die by God means that he knew, you know, that, that he knew Adam didn't need to know this because he did not expect Adam to be disobedient. He doesn't expect you and I to be disobedient. Amen. That's not a negative. That's a good thing. I'm not going out here just trying to prove how bad I can be. <laughs> OK. All right. Say so amen. Everybody needs to say amen to that one. All right. So we also saw, right, uh, that God gave him all the information that he needed about it in their discourse. Lastly, here he said he was never created to die, but to have perpetual existence. OK. Now, with that being said, I want to jump off here and turn. Mm, no, just stay there. Write this down. 
Write this down. As God's intent was in the beginning, so it is now. As God's intent was in the beginning, so it is now. In other words, what he intended to do through Adam and Eve, he still intends to do through you and I. Listen to me. And he did not accomplish the fullness of it through Jesus Christ, except spiritually. I'm going to say that again, because I know everybody here as well, it is finished. Yes, the redemptive work of Jesus is finished when he went to the cross, died, rose again. All that's part of the gospel. He can't just die on the cross. He's got to get up again in order to make this work. So in that, he's now, and that's why I mentioned a few minutes ago, he's now seated in heaven at the right hand of the Father, overseeing his body, of which you and I are a part. We're not just a part, we're a vital part. Say, I'm a vital part. part. Turn to somebody and make eye contact and say, I'm a vital part. part. Now look at that same person and say, you're a vital part. You are a vital part of what God's going to do, even if you don't know it, even if you don't believe it. That's why this church teaches our, 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 our uh, mission is to make people ready to meet the Lord. Why? Because you can sit in the church literally, and people do it all the time. You know it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. They go to church. They call themselves Christians, and they go, and they go, and they go. They just show up. Nothing changes in their lives. They've lived good moral lives. They've been born again. True. Amen. But there's been no victory, no success. Their families are full of, full of craziness, madness, and dysfunction. And then when they get to God and they stand before the Lord and the Lord says, well, you know, I called you to have a uh, uh, evangelistic ministry. I called you to be on a mission field to China. And you say, what? How many of you know that you're going to know then what you should know now? Are you with me this morning? Why? Because of, say, seed. Seed. Say it like you mean it. Seed. Seed. In each one of us. In each one of us, there is a seed. There has been divinely planted by God a seed. With that being said, let me ask this question. With that being said, whose responsibility is to see that it grows? Is it to see that it grows? Ours. Ours. What I, I remember not too long ago, I was reading, um, uh, I, I think, I don't know what source I was reading in, but I was doing some reading in a book that I had, and it was in my office, and I saw where this gentleman was talking about, he was a Middle Eastern or, uh, of that, that region, uh, talking about putting, people putting curses on you, okay? Now, but it wasn't voodoo and, and witchcraft and all that in that sense. He said the greatest curse that he ever heard was when somebody told him, told an individual, I pray that you never grow beyond where you are today. Imagine that. Imagine if you and I, in all of who we are, all of our educational accomplishment, our physical prowess, our business skill, whatever we've done, imagine if today was the day when you stopped growing. That's not a pleasant thought. That's a tremendous curse. Can I tell you, I was talking to our, our leadership group on Monday, you know, success is harder than failure. Y'all know that, right? Because success means that you have to do something with the information that you get. Failure just means you got to wake up in the morning and do nothing. If you wake up in the morning and do absolutely nothing, nothing, you will fail miserably. And you will open yourself up to whatever is in the region, the, the atmosphere, whatever you want to call it, to come to you because it takes diligence and persistence to keep that stuff out of your life. I think I'll stay on this side because y'all responded better. That, that revelation is still making its way across the aisle. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Okay, turn with me to Genesis 9, please. So God's intent, as it was in the beginning, is the same as it is now. I'm going to show you what that is in just a minute. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Genesis 9. Thank you, Father. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Hold your place there. Find your Genesis 9. And turn over to Genesis 3. Put a, put a bookmark or something right there. Genesis 3. But hold Genesis 9. Come, come back there. Good old water. 
Hallelujah. That right there. Yeah. Praise God. I can't, I can't tolerate warm water. <laughs> so they freeze my water and it melts slowly during the service. I thank you for doing that. Appreciate it. But I can't put wet, wet hands on this. Makes all this bleed and I can't. Okay. All right. Did you find Gen Galatians? What did I tell you to turn to? Okay. You're Gen you got Genesis 9. Okay. In the spirit, I meant Galatians 3. So hold on. <laughs> hold on to Genesis 9. What can I say, man? Hold on to Genesis 9, but I got to go to Galatians 3 first at the direction of the Lord. It'll make it more sense. Isn't it good to have grace, man? Hey, I like having fun. Okay. Galatians 3, verse 10. I know that one's not in there, gentlemen, so if you would turn there, I would appreciate that if you put it up here on the board. Galatians 3, excuse me, verse 10, because we are on a mission and I want to get there. Somebody said to me, um, somebody shared this with me, and I won't say who it is, doesn't matter, um, that they like life point better when I preach, 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 preach. Okay. Problem with just preach, 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 preaching is good, but... There's very little growth that takes place until we sit down like this and exchange thoughts and ideas, right. teaching. Yeah. That's why the gift of teacher is absolutely essential to, this, to, the, to, the, to the body of Christ. Yeah. Now, I probably preach better than I teach, but that's okay. Because the reason why I say that is because I get happy and I get excited and the revelation hits me and then I just want to run and run and run, you know. But, however, teaching is good for you because teaching helps you grow. Amen? Amen. All right. So Galatians 3, verse 10, if you have it, say amen. amen. All right, you got it on the board, gentlemen? All right, so I'm going to read this from the Expanded Bible real quick. Uh, verse 9, well, excuse me, verse 10 says, But those who depend on following the law to make them right are under a curse. Now, remember what I said about curse, right? Because the scripture says anyone will be cursed who does not always obey what is written in the book of the law. <clears throat> now, verse 11, it is clear that no one can be made right with, with God by the law, because the scriptures say those who are right with God will live by what? Faith. Say faith. Okay. Now, verse, verse 12 says the law is not based in faith. It, it, it says a person who obeys these things will live because of them. He goes on to say, verse 13, which is where I want to stop this right now. Christ took away the curse the law put on us. Good place to shout amen. He changed places with us and put himself under that curse. It is written in the scriptures, anyone whose body is displayed on a tree is cursed. Okay, now turn back over with me to Genesis 9. Thank you, Lord. The Apostle Paul writes in Galatians and says this in essence. Is there anybody in here, <clears throat> I'm going to paraphrase it. Is there anybody in here that feels righteous. Anybody here that feels righteous? You feel righteous. Look around. Look around the room. Ain't nobody raised their hand. Is there anybody in here that feels saved? Boy, you guys are good. You're good. You've been going to a good church. I don't know what church you've been going to, but you've been going to a good church, okay? Now, stay with me. Is there anybody in here, <laughs> whoo, I'm in Iowa now, that feels like a man? Y'all know why I said that? All right, my, okay, you'll get it later. Is there anybody here that feels like a woman? You feel like a woman? Okay. Yeah, okay. Listen, listen. Okay, yes, yeah. See, y'all getting excited now. Okay, yeah. Notice, listen, notice that you couldn't feel righteous or feel saved, but you could feel like a male or, or female. You notice the difference? Because the first two are spiritually discerned. So your flesh has no recognition that I'm righteous. Come on now. So your flesh has no recognition that you're saved. Because your flesh didn't get saved. I wish I could get it better. Amen. But as a male or a female, you recognize that that, his, that seed has been planted in you. 
<laughs> Glory to God. And you as a female don't have to do anything to change it. You just female. Amen. Come on now. And as a male, you just a male that needs cleaning up. <laughs> Learn to put the seat down on the toilet. Amen. 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 <laughs> yes. So my point is, listen, listen. My point is the law tries to make you feel righteous. In other, in other words, listen, notice this part. You still, I got you in the right place here. I want you to write this down. Just hold your place there in Genesis. We're going to get there. You have to notice this because if you miss this part, it's like missing a piece of the puzzle. Okay. I don't like puzzles because pieces get lost and then I got all these pieces. I work all this time and then one piece missing. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to do all that. But this is important. Notice that it is not until after the fall that the body, talking about Adam's body, and its protection becomes important. Do y'all notice that? Right? Until af after Adam sinned, ate the fruit, not apple, ate the fruit of the tree, whatever it was, his... <laughs> oh, only a life point, boy. <laughs> Only, <laughs> it was not until after. Now, here, stay with me. I want you to hear me because what I'm getting into is, gonna, is directly connected to this. In other words, Adam, as he walked around with God, had no consciousness of how he was clothed, his attire. It didn't matter because its protection, its preservation, its wellness, and its strength came directly from the master. Adam did not have to do anything to make himself physically fit. It just didn't, wasn't, wasn't intended to be. Then why then do we have to do it? Because, say because, of the seed of disobedience, which grew into sin, and now we fall under the curse. Say until Jesus becomes our Lord. Right? Now, as Jesus, my Lord, the curse, I just read it to you, the curse that was on us has now been placed on him. <laughs> that curse now is no longer for your, you and I to bear. And we say amen. And we struggle with not feeling righteous. We say amen, but we struggle with not feeling saved. Your feelings about salvation and your righteousness are misdirected. Why? Because what the devil does, he tries to get you into the realm of feeling so that you can stay out of the realm of faith. Turn over, turn, turn, okay, open up to Genesis, where did I leave you at? Genesis 9, correct? Okay, Genesis 9. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you ain't got it by now, just open your book to the front <laughs> and keep going till you see the number nine. And God said, blessed, oh, excuse me, and God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, what? Fruitful. Say it loud. Be fruitful. Be fruitful and what? Multiply. Multiply. All right, y'all got that? That's what he said to Noah and who? His and his sons. And he said also to what? Replenish the earth. Replenish the earth. To replenish means that there had to already be provision in the earth. What we go about doing, because we learned this after, after knowledge was introduced to us from the wrong source, from that tree, we go, about, we go about it the wrong way. In other words, we think we've got to do what God has already done. I didn't get very immense on that. Let me say. God has already plenished the earth. He did that before he placed mankind in it. TJ was talking about when God, God rested on the seventh day. He didn't rest because he was tired. He rested because he was finished. Jesus comes back and confirms in the New Testament and says, hey, Father, what you gave me to do, in other words, the assignment, 
It is finished. What did Jesus then do? He came. John 12, 32 says that he came. He, Jesus said, except a corn or a grain of wheat, which is a what? Seed fall into the ground and die. It abides alone. But if it dies, it what? Replenishes. You plenish, you plenish, you plenish, you plenish, all God's children plenish. You are all, we are the replenishment project of the Lord. And in being replenished, what God has done is he has unlocked the code, as it were, to your spiritual DNA and the seed that he planted in you before he placed you in your mama's womb. And he gave you an assignment to come to the earth and to be fruitful and to multiply it. You hear me? Now, what does that do? You can't make yourself any more righteous than you are right now, right here today. Randy can't come up and say, you know, brother pastor, I sinned last night and I think God's mad at me. He can say it, but it ain't true. God doesn't have to be mad at you, ladies and gentlemen, because he put his anger on Jesus. And when you try to take something that is not in God's will, it is like you eating from the tree of good and evil again. And you're getting information that comes through your feelings rather than your faith. And have you ever noticed that when, when we struggle the most, I've been there, I'm telling, I'm being honest, I've been there. When we struggle the most, it is when we've, we feel like we have let God down or disappointed God because we've done something that makes us feel bad. Oh, I'm preaching better than I. Because what happens is the only realm that the devil can affect you is in your thinking realm. He can, and he's a master now. He'll tell you you're not worthy. You know why he tells you you ain't worthy? Because he ain't worthy. And he, all he can do is tell you. I heard John Osteen say this. Was it John Osteen I heard? Say this? I don't know. Uh, dad of Joel. <clears throat> he said that uh, he was getting on an airplane. And he was afraid to fly. Now, if you know anything about John Osteen, he's been long gone. But, but he, you know Lakewood Church? John built that, not Joel. Okay, I'm just telling y'all. John, John Osteen and his wife. Uh, but anyway, so, so he's getting, out, getting on a plane and he's afraid to fly. A preacher afraid to fly is a tough thing. <laughs> just saying. You're going to be doing a whole lot of driving. Anyway, so he's there and he said he was on his way to the airport and the devil was just letting him have it. Now, how's the devil letting him have it? Through his thoughts. That's why we act crazy when we get out of the, out of the plan of God. Y'all ain't got to say amen to this. I know this is true because I've been crazy, crazy, crazy. Way, too, way more than I want to admit, but I, I have to have full disclosure because this ain't going to work if you think that I'm exempt. Man, I have acted crazy with no Y and two E's on the end. You know the old saying, I know karate and the lady said, I know crazy. Huh? So he was getting ready to get on the airplane and he's on his way. They're taking him to the airport and he's sitting there and the devil's just, you're going to crash. You're going to crash. You're going to crash. You're going to crash. Your plane is going to crash. It's going to crash. And so he got on the plane because he knew he had to go and he's sitting there and he's like a, what they call the white knuckle flyer. He's holding on, and you know, and you know, y'all know how airplanes do. They get to going on and start that little rumble and that push. And y'all know, y'all be thinking, Lord, Forgive me, Father. You know how y'all do? Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Whatever I, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. And then the plane lifts up. Ah, oh, okay. Then now y'all hit that turbulence. Forgive me, Lord. 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 Forgive me. And then you land, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, Brother Osteen said that, that he sat on the plane and just devil wearing him out. Just, just giving him what for. Finally, they land. And he's like, ah. Breathe, say, ah. Sigh of relief, you know how it is when that when you know you're down on the tarmac and on that runway and you taxi and y'all know how y'all do y'all gathering y'all stuff together and trying to beat make sure you're the first one in so you can get out and everybody stands up and the aisle gets clogged, right? And he said he got outside and he kind of he realized that the devil wasn't saying nothing now because he landed. He got outside, he got his bags, he goes and gets in the car and the devil started right up. You're gonna crash. You're gonna crash. You're gonna crash. The car's gonna have accidents. You're gonna. Have, you see how he does? 
He's working overtime to get you out of faith into your feeling. And if you act on what he says, next thing you know, because fear will, fear will stop, stop faith in its tracks. There's no such thing as a little good, like they say, a little, what's that, little fear, but a little white lie. A lie is a lie. White, black, purple, green, blue. All right? So what is he trying to do? He's trying to do the same thing he did with Adam, speaking of Satan, and get Adam and Eve to disobey God so that now they become the, the, they become the ones in control of their destiny. Now, can I ask you this question? A person who is not born again, are they in control of their destiny? What do you think? Who would say yes to that? Raise your hand. Oh, y'all good. Y'all been listening. Y'all been cheating, man. Y'all been studying. You, they're not in control of their destiny. Because as a human, you have to have an overlord. You weren't created. To, God, didn't, God didn't create Adam and say, okay, uh, you got this. No, God said, I'm with you. We got this. And so people that are not born again, and they, they may not know this, hopefully if they're watching, you will share it with them later, that their Lord is Satan. And they will get the reward, the same reward that their Lord gets. Just like us. Amen. Okay, let's keep going. You all right? So let's see where I left off. I'm going to keep going there. So he tells him, verse 7, he tells Noah and his sons, be fruitful, multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And God spake again unto Noah, verse 8, and, and to his sons with him, saying, and I, behold, what is he doing? I establish my covenant with you and with your what? Seed after you. Do you see this? Look up at me for one second. The Lord ministered this to my heart. I wasn't sure I was going to say it, but I hear him saying it now. Every one of us is in a position and a place right now that the seeds that we've sown have gotten us to. No matter where you are. If, you're, if your marriage is good, you've sown good seed to it. It didn't happen accidentally. If your physical body is good. Now, some might say, well, I didn't, you know, yeah, 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 you did. But if you, if, let's say you, you inherited, um, I, I'll just use me, okay? Um, I had, th uh, the month of July, I had two surgeries, okay, on my eye. Somebody walked in my house at a meeting the other one day, and I had a patch on my eye. I felt like patch the pirate. Arr. Okay? Now, <clears throat> my eye is a very important thing to me. Isn't that right, Daryl? Right? My eye is very important to me. Now, with that being said, I inherited it. I didn't do anything wrong. Listen to me, it's going to help somebody. There might be things laying dormant in your body that you inherited that you don't know about. But because you have, but you, because you have been on an obedient track and you've taken the word of God and received the word of healing from the Lord, these things won't manifest. So what if they do manifest? Then I have a, I have a, I have a covenant. I have a covenant. And I stand on a covenant. Listen, and I don't care about what it feels like. Because I'm not based on feeling anymore. Are, is this getting through? Because I have to know that I have a covenant by a, a unchangeable God. The Bible says that when he... We, that when he, he, he spoke, he swore by himself because he could find no greater to swear by. So when God speaks and makes promise to men, mankind, the promise, just like it was made in the beginning to who? Adam. Followed up by who? Noah. Come on, Noah was first, right? Y'all do know that. Y'all do know Noah and then who? Thank you. Abraham got a covenant. Moses got a covenant. Oh, stop it. I'm preaching, not you. Oh. All God's children got a covenant. Uh-huh. And what God, did, listen, and what, the reason why God placed this responsibility on Noah, are y'all listening, is because the, the, the world that had been created, created had been destroyed. So he had to start over, not with a, not with a new planet, but with new punishment. Oh, God help me. So he put it in the earth and he instructed, now Noah has the responsibility. Because you do remember, we, my wife and I watched this movie the other day, um, Evan Almighty. Anybody ever seen that movie? Yeah. It's been around forever, I guess. I don't know. We just wanted to watch something that wasn't crazy. crazy. And so we watched Evan Almighty. Okay, for all y'all non-movie watching folks, get over it. Okay, you good till you said that. Anyway. Anyway, 
So what God did, though, is that the earth and all of its inhabitants who were all seeds had to be destroyed. Because he says, I see that man, the, it's in his heart is only evil continually. God doesn't work with evil, nor does he plant evil. If you've got, if you've got, uh, 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 if you've got in your life anger issues, that didn't come from God. Come on now. If you've got things that seem to be out of control, God is not a God of out of control. He's a God of in control. So, but with that, so Noah now, because the, the earth has been now plenished or replenished, now what happens is Noah has the responsibility and God speaks to his sons so that his sons don't get a misinterpreted message from Noah. He makes sure he tells them right there. Then they had that responsibility. Now, let's, let's keep going. Does that make sense? Okay. So, thank you, Father. This, you can write this down. This goes back to what I asked you about how Adam was dressed. This is important because Adam learned early on total reliance on God. And if I, if I, I've said it thousands of times and I will continue to say it, the challenge for most of us is trusting God to take care of us all the time. Yeah. And when God doesn't show up in a timely manner like we think he should, we, re we revert to our own plan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I know it's I know it's so I've done it many times myself, you know, and what I what I've learned and what I'm learning is taking me years to do it. Not not. It's just taking me years to to get to the faith point. We're just saying, you know what? God, you got this. I have to do it with this church. I have to do it with my physical body, my wife's physical body. You know, some of the challenges she's been through physically with our children. I got children right now that are, that are challenged with some things. You know what I'm saying? I have a daughter that moved to heaven in, before I wanted her to go. I've had to put all that in God's hands and trust that, you know what? You got Tommy Roberts. Because if, if I have, I've done Tommy Roberts before. Put your, put your hand on your own head. You've done you before. And you doing you is nowhere near as good as God can do you. I wish I had some help in this place this morning. When God does you, you come out, oh my God, you come out looking just like he intended you to look. Just like him. Now what was, how was Adam dressed? Let's take a look at that real quick. Turn to uh, Psalm. Psalm 8, the 8th Psalm. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 8. Psalm 8, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Let me know when you get there. Amen. Praise you, Father. Psalm 8, uh, and let me see. I'm going to have to find it here because it's not popping up on my tablet. Thank you, Lord. By faith. By faith. Okay, Psalm 8, verse 1, if you have a say Amen. Okay, your name is the most wonderful name. Did we not sing that today? Uh huh. And it goes on to say, in all the earth. You can write down just as a note, Exodus, 34, uh, Exodus 3, 14 to 15. Just write it down as a side note. That'll help you. It'll bless you. He goes on to say, it brings you praise in heaven above. You have taught children and babies to sing praises to you. That's why, you know, people... I know we get sometimes challenged in our patients, and it's not so much everybody else, but when parents have, have kids in the service, they're constantly aware that they're there. <laughs> yeah. But they don't, they don't, I love the noise. God loves the noise. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think God would have, rather have a room full of kids than a room full of adults. <laughs> you know? Anyway, I better stop there. I was getting ready to tell a story that my daughter-in-law told me. I, I, my daughter-in-law told me about so how somebody approached one of my grandbabies. Okay. I think I said that last week, and if you're watching, you're blessed that I wasn't there. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so you have taught children and babies to sing praises to you because of your enemies, he says. And so you silence your enemies and those who try to get even or revenge. Verse 3, I look at your heavens, which you made with your fingers. I see the moon. Wasn't TJ talking about that today? I see the moon and the stars, which you created. Verse 4 says, but why, listen, why are people even important to you? King James says, what, are, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Why does God care about you? Listen to me. Look up at me. Hold your place there. It is a demonic strategy to make you think 
that God does not care about you. And way too many people fall for that. Not you, because you know better. Remember when Jesus was on the back of the ship and, this, and, and Jesus had said to them, let us go to the other side. What did Jesus do? He went to what? Sleep. He didn't go to sleep because he was tired. He went to sleep because he recognized that there was no reason to stay awake. Because he'd already made, given his, why not just lay down? He lays down and the disciples couldn't sleep because they were out there in the night and the wind got crazy and the, and the, and the waves got crazy. And what was the first thing out of the disciples mouth? Carest thou not that we perish. In other words, you don't care for us because if you did, you wouldn't be sleeping. I'm telling you that the Bible says in Psalm 124 that he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. So it doesn't matter what season you're in. He not sleeping, baby. Even if his eyelids are closed, he not sleeping. He's seeing into the realm that he needs to see in to make sure that you and I are covered. Jesus gets up. He says, peace, be still. He didn't even address the fact that somebody said to him, you don't care. Because he knew that it would pull him out of faith and get on the same level as them based on feeling. And he asked to them, he says, listen, where is your faith? Didn't he ask him that? So, so here he says, the angels are talking to him, says, why do you take care of human beings? You made them a little lower than the angels or God. That, the, in a King James Version, that word translated is not angels. It's not. It's mistranslated. You go to any concordance, any place, you'll see it. What it is, is you made him lower, just a little lower than God. You are not God, but you are God's offspring. You can talk like God, act like God, walk like God, speak like God, have faith of God. Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. That doesn't make you God. It makes you God's babies. Amen. And he watches over his own. Amen. Hmm. Hallelujah. He says you put them in charge. Oh, no, I skipped a verse. You made them a little lower than the angels. And this is this is what Adam was clothed with and Eve and crowned them with glory and honor. In other words. Stand up for me real quick. Just stand right here. Hold this, for me, please. In other words, if I'm going to crown Mike, I'm not going to take a mallet and bing. Right. What I am going to do is I'm going to come to him in this translation and, and I'm going to lay my hands or my presence on him and give him all of me. Come on now. You know God's got nothing but glory and honor. So he crowns him and her because they're one, crowns them and he releases them with that glory. Thank you. With that glory and with that covering so that no matter where he walked, no matter where she walked, my God, Everybody knew that they were the dominion, the, the dominant creatures of the earth. They didn't have to go out and kill a lion because a lion was no threat. They didn't have to be concerned about a snake because, or a serpent because a serpent was no threat. Are y'all hearing me this morning? And so we've got some old cockamamie idea of thinking, no, no, well, you know, they were running around naked. No, baby. No. There was no such thing as nakedness. How could they identify nakedness? Nakedness didn't come about till they ate from that tree. And then some people took that to go to a nudist colony. We used to have a brother who used to attend this church. He told me one day, he said, Pastor, I want to invite you. To where I go sometimes. I'm like, where you go? Where you go? <laughs> I'm naive, you know. I'm like, where you go? Well, we going, we going parasailing, we going hooping, we going fishing, you know. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, well, you know, I, I'm a partaker. There's a name for it, and I can't remember what he said. But please don't yell out the name, okay? Because if you know that name, if you know that name, keep it to yourself, okay? Y'all get that later, okay? And so I was like. No, 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 no. <laughs> thank you, but no thank you. Okay, that's a true story. That's true. Needless to say, he doesn't come here anymore. Anyway, <laughs> so, okay, so he's, we've established that he's been, he has been crowned with, with glory and honor. Okay, we got that, right? So let's, let's write this down because this is where I want to, so I can kind of wind this thing down. We have to identify what, 
things make us able to be fruitful and multiply. We have to identify those things. I was listening to Dr. Winston. We were there uh, earlier in the year, and he was talking to all the pastors that were in the room and different ministry leaders. And he said this statement and just kind of, you know how things just stick with you? Stick with you? He said, he said, you determine the value of your day. You and I determine the value of your day. You and I determine the productivity of your day. There are some things that are more productive than others. Prayer is always productive. Begging is not. Okay? All right? If I get up in the morning and I'm, I'm conscious of God, I, as I told you this before, I, as my, my incorporation into my life, I get up and I always say, good morning, Father, or Dad, or God, but I usually say, good morning, Father, good morning, Jesus, and good morning, Holy Spirit. Always. That's, that's just who I am. Even if I ain't feeling it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Especially if I ain't feeling it. I'm looking at what the day holds. I ain't feeling it. My prayer time is limited because I got to get a jump. Maybe I, I went to bed too late, stayed up too late, got up too late, got to walk the dog, got all this stuff to do. I am going to determine the value of my day and its productivity. Okay? Watching CNN first does not add value to your day. Reading the Gazette, in it the Gazette, I always say the Gazette, reading the Gazette is not going to add value to your day. It's just not. Not unless the Lord tells you to. I have a hard time believing that God's telling you to wake up and read bad news. It ain't even current news because it had to happen the night before or it wouldn't be in print. Or So is it really news? I'm just kidding. Let me keep going. Okay. Somebody already knew it before you did. Anyway, so understand what things are going to do this and add to your life. So this is, this is where I want to go. And I want you to think about this. I want you to go into this scenario with me if I can get, get there. The first woman... The first woman, okay, helps man be fruitful. He sure can't multiply without her. Now, listen to me well, because I'm going to deviate from anything, you know, this, any of the stuff that you might have heard before, because I've said this to my wife many days, and, and, and some of you already know this. If you don't, you should know it. And I think it intimidates a lot of women from getting into ministry or getting, getting involved in ministry because, because uh, uh, in a male-dominated culture, uh, 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 men have a tendency to somehow or another look down on the office or the, the, the anointing and authority of women. And to me, they're, they're, they're insecure. They're insecure. Amen. She said, I agree. You should agree, too. God never put Eve with Adam so that Adam could dominate her. He put Eve with Adam so that he could be fruitful and multiply. And you will find, listen to me, you will find that any time an individual does not know the purpose, God help me, does not know their own purpose or the purpose of why God joined you with somebody, there will be conflict and there will be unfruitfulness. Yes. 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 <laughs> I don't know if I can. If you, listen, listen, anytime you don't know your purpose or anytime you don't know the purpose of who God has joined you with, maybe he hasn't joined you with somebody yet. Don't, don't get panicky. Amen. Don't get panicky. He got some, but you got to build it, baby. You got to wait until you know that you know that you know. Because too many times we have leapt out there and got with the wrong thing. And that thing did not know its purpose or yours. I'm, I'm preaching, Ben. Y'all saying amen. Because ultimately, God could not make human or mankind be fruitful until he brought the package together completely. Help me, God. And the Bible says, Jesus, God said, it is not what? He didn't say it wasn't convenient. Many of us act like it's not convenient. You know, I don't need no woman. You, go, you, you, you crazy as a loon. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Y'all laughing at me. Did God not say it's not good for man to be alone? Then how can we say it's okay? Say it louder. Feelings. I'm careful because there's babies in here, okay? Y'all, parents, I'm safe. Don't, don't get panicky. 
I was, where's JT? I was, I was uh, yesterday, uh, my nephew came over to the house and we were just kind of like, we, we weren't really doing nothing. I'd just gotten home from another appointment and uh, um, she was listening to some praise and worship and I turned the TV, I turned the channel, you know? And I turned on and it was, you know, I like, uh, what's that guy's name? What's, what's his name? No, 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 the, the actor. Um, the, the, uh, the white bearded played God, oh God, uh, in, in uh, huh? Morgan Freeman. I like Morgan Freeman. I saw him. I saw. I was like, okay. I was really looking for a college football game. To be honest with you. And I'm not a big college football guy. I just, just. I had a long week, so I was just kind of wanting a distraction. And so, boy, did I get one. So I, I, I watched a little bit of the movie. I got up and I turned to walk away, and it was on. And JT had sat down there too. He's like, I said, man, sit down, relax. You know, he was over there trying to help us do something. And all of a sudden, I heard this commercial. Y'all might as well pull your religious toes in, because I'm gonna tell you just like it is. And in the commercial, it was a C-O-N-D-O-M commercial. On TV. In the middle of a Saturday. Now, okay, okay. They, it was like a public service thing and they were trying to, trying to, you know, they were, what they were saying was that, you know, uh, if I had taken a moment, I wouldn't be in the situation I'm in now. <laughs> Y'all can read, I'm not saying any more than that because I got babies in here. But that didn't, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. That didn't strike me as, uh, that, you know, I mean, because we adults, we've been dealing with this for a long time. Don't act like you outside of this thing. It is the, it is the attitude that makes, that, that somehow or another we think we're outside of this. We get into this sanitized bubble, this Holy Ghost bubble. You need to deal with that kind of stuff, confront it right, right in its face. Amen. And what shocked me was that, and I ain't watched TV in a long time, you know, we watched Andy Griffith. You know what I'm saying? We watch stuff that where well, there ain't no cussing and ain't no, that's what I, you know, if I'm going to watch anything. And sure enough, there was two, these two, two dudes laying in bed together. And one saying that about, I'm like, and I asked, I asked my nephew, what did he say? Because I was turning this way. I was like, what, where are the blah, 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 blah. <laughs> now, why do I say that? Because we have given ourselves over to feelings instead of truth. I'm going to submit to you. I'm going to submit to you. Y'all may not like me. It's coming out over the airwaves. I am not going to be apologetic at all. Listen, if you get, a, get the right woman with the right man, you're going to do what God said do. Yes. That didn't go over very well. Because get... the Bible says God said it's not good that man be alone. So, so what does the devil do? He then comes in. He then comes in and starts downplaying the role of the woman. And the woman starts feeling intimidated because some old stodgy old preacher tells her, well, you know, it's not, it's not right for a woman to usurp the authority of a man. Look, see, she proving it right now. She don't bit more care about me. You feeling me? Let her run. She good. No, she ain't bothering me. As long as I don't step on her, she a little squirt. Oh, there she go. But, but my point is, that's what I'm saying. Listen, she, God help me. Thank you, Holy she doesn't know the difference at this age. It's not until she gets older that somebody has to plant some negative seed in her and tell her what she can't do. Say amen to that. <laughs> and where does it come from? It comes from that fruit that was taken off that tree where all of that knowledge was unleashed on the earth. And what Jesus did is he comes to Galatians 3, we read it a little bit ago, to take that knowledge and say it doesn't work, ladies and gentlemen. Let me keep going so I can, so I can run out of time. Is it making sense to y'all? Any of this making sense to y'all? <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse, eight, verse 18 said, in the, in, over in Genesis, it says, uh, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper, right? Not a hater. Huh? Right? He, he going to make somebody to help him. And, and then I, I, I really enjoy Proverbs 18 and 22. You can write it down. I'm not going to turn there. The Bible says, whoso, whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain the favor of the Lord. And so what the devil does is, is he comes in and convinces a society that gets distanced from God that, and help me God, I'm just going to say it, this women's lib is now significant. And all it is is pushing back against the intimidation of a man. You got some small minded man and some stubborn woman trying to come together and both of them got more degrees than a thermometer and they can't they can't figure out up from down. 
they crazy as, as, as a loon and they running around here trying to tell you and I and they get the TV shows, they get the talk shows, they get all this stuff, but they ain't got no God there. And we as the ones who have, have access to the kingdom because we got God anytime we want him, baby. That's why you need to turn that stuff off and turn, get back in the work. Mm, okay, I better be careful because go down Moses, way down to Egypt land, tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. Many of us are controlled by Pharaoh and don't even realize it. You know, when, when, did, when did Adam become controlled by Pharaoh? The moment, he, moment he, they, they ate from that tree? Yes. Pharaoh showed up. That spirit of Pharaoh showed up. And now what happens when we, when we revert to knowledge that does not line up with God's scripture, we have, in, we have allowed a spiritual Pharaoh to come into our lives. Anything, anything, listen to me, anything that you have allowed in your life, you cannot, listen, you can't blame Satan for it. You can't blame God for it. The blame rests solely at your feet. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So with that being said, now what happens is he's given her, given him, her to him, and she is now an ally, and she is not in subordinate status. They're figuring this thing out together. Now, clearly, I tell, I tell young men this all the time. I certainly tell married men, you know, when it comes to that house, the final decision in that house, if you and your wife are in perfect harmony, she agrees or she disagrees or whatever, a decision has to be made, who's God going to look at? He ain't going to look at her, he's going to look at you. That's right. The man. Because yeah. that's the way he designed it. Right. Now, if you're doing it the right way, y'all going to talk about it before you just go out and buy that, buy that new car. And you ain't tell your wife. And you ain't tell her how much money you pulled out the bank account. And then when she go check the bank account, ain't no money in there. I'm sorry. You should have asked. Right? But, but when, it comes to, when it comes to spiritual matters, collectively, you both are fruitful and multiplying. And what do you do? You go before God in prayer. You take communion at home. Say, Father, I don't, we don't know what we're doing here. I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit that I need knowledge from you. According to your word, James 1 says that, that if any man lacks the knowledge, you let him ask of you. So Lynette and I come, we ask you right now. We had to do that. We've had to do that in our finances. We've had to do that in our family. We've had to do that with this ministry. We've had to do that. We have had to do that. And it's not a, it's not a chore. It's just something you got to remember to do. Right. Amen? Amen? All right. So we see how, here how important women are to the plan of God. It, listen, if the female of the species was destined to be cursed, God would have never created her because he doesn't do anything unintentionally. So when men, women, women come across as like they're being, you know, abused and misused and everything, whatever the reason, whatever the door that opened all this up to them, whatever the door that opened all this up to them, uh, for one, it needs, it's got to be closed because somebody planted the wrong seed in there. And if that seed gets in there, that seed doesn't know anything to do but to grow. You put it in there. And, and in some cases, seed doesn't need watering. It doesn't need a whole lot of sunlight. Some seeds are just going to grow. In a spiritual sense, listen to me well. In a spiritual sense, seeds that are planted by God's enemy. You can see this over in Mark 4 because the disciples came out and he had planted. He, the sower sows the word. And, and, the, and the, uh, the, when it grew up, the tares grew up with it, right? Y'all remember the story without me turning there? And the tares grew up and, the, and they came and the people said, Master, who hath done this thing? And the Lord said, uh, an enemy has done this. Right? And he says, he says the, the, the tender says, should we cut it down? He says, no, let it, leave it alone. Yeah. Let both of them grow until the day of what? The harvest or the judgment. Same thing. Harvest. When that harvest comes, the Lord's going to separate the wheat from the tear. Yeah. And I submit to you that there's a lot of churches where there's both wheat and tear sitting in the same sanctuary. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Why? Because these things have been sown into your life for years and years and years. And it's taking hearing and teaching like this revelation that comes from the Holy Spirit at home in your private time, when you're driving, when you're talking, getting in home point groups, all these kind of things, men's groups, women groups, whatever. And you're, this stuff is being cultivated out of your life. But you didn't get in this mess overnight. Amen. You took years of bad teaching for you to get to a bad spot. <laughs> OK, but it doesn't take years of good teaching. All it takes is obedience to the word. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That revelation knowledge is freely given to you. It's flowing. It's flowing right now. Yeah. 
Mm, okay, let me hurry up. So it is easier to fall away when you don't know your purpose. So it's easy for me to abuse a thing that I don't know the purpose of. If I didn't know that my wife, I, you know, <coughs> I know I am. She said, be careful, I am. <laughs> now, I'm real, now I'm being wise, not just careful. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. For years, I didn't know her purpose. I did not know it. I'm going to stop right there. For years, I didn't know her purpose. And I was doing some figuring the other day. Yeah, Lord. Um, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Thank you, Lord. 27 years being born again. And the remembrance of the first eight where I was not. It's like night and day. It's, it's hard to remember those days because God has done so much cultivating of my thinking. Not that they didn't happen, but cultivating of my thinking to realize that when those eight years were going on, it was because I didn't know her purpose. She, so anything you don't know the purpose of, you have a higher potential to abuse. And that goes both ways. Because a lot of women don't know how valuable the man they have in their life is. And I'm going to tell you all this just because it bears being said. Ladies, if you got a good man, a good husband, because he need to be your husband, not just your man. Because if he's just your man and you sleeping with him, you need to repent. I got that coming. <laughs> he says, so does he. But if you the one born again, you need to do it. And if he don't know Jesus, you need to introduce him to him. But ladies, if that's not the case and you got a good husband, he born again, you got a good man, you better hold on to that joker. Because a good man is hard to find especially in today's society. And brothers, if you got a good woman, good wife, and she ain't your wife, you need to repent. Because you can't be fruitful and multiply and allow yourself to be opened up to the activity of, of unrighteousness. I got to tell the whole truth, right? Okay, not just that which feels good. My point simply is this. Once I know the purpose and like I said, 27 years ago, God showed me the purpose. And that purpose has become clearer and clearer and clearer. Doesn't mean everything has been, you know, a bed of roses. But we are, we are being fruitful and multiplying because we have yielded ourselves to that which we did not know. God help me. Most folks want to be in control. And I don't know about that, Pastor. You ain't supposed to know about everything. That's where faith is coming into play. God knows. God knows, I'm telling you. Okay, I'm not out of words, but I'm out of time. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it is, it is an organized plot of the enemy to destroy our families. And most of it stems from, a good, good portion of it stems from our own lack of understanding. That's why when you come to church, you should engage your mind. You shouldn't disengage, disengage and wait for somebody to make you say, yeah. And you know, no, no, no. <laughs> say, yeah. Say what? Mm. Mm. Ain't saying nothing. Mm. Oh, yes. Hey, glory to God. Ain't God good? Yeah, he's good. And he's good all the time. So, so when you want your, remember we read this last week, you want your physical senses engaged, you probably want to find someplace else to go to church. 
It'll happen, but that's not why you come. You need your spiritual senses heightened. You need to know that when I leave here, this is just this is just the this is the workout room. You were. Oh God. You know what I'm saying? You feeling it, you know, you know, come, you feel like you done had a Holy Ghost workout because you're supposed to have one. You're supposed to walk out of here, bless God. You know how you go in the gym and you got you got the right gear on, you matching, you looking good, you got your earbuds or your your earbuds or whatever you got, and you doing the track or you doing it elliptical or whatever you're doing, and you have spent 30, 40 minutes in there sweating, don't care, because you you have a goal, you are going to look good, you are going to fit that dress again, you are going to get into that suit again, and you will do whatever it takes. You will sacrifice food, you will sacrifice time, you will do all of that, and you will come out and have lost one pound and you do not say it's a bad day but when you're in the presence of God baby by the power of the Holy Ghost and he starts doing spiritual dentistry or spiritual workouts on you he starts pulling out the old so he can put in the new he dumps all of the old wine out of you and, and replenishes it with new wine and a new wine skin and a new attitude you have learned, son. You get out of here. You walk out that door and you start saying, you don't look for the devil because you don't have to. He's going to show up in the name of Jesus. And that devil comes because he's going to try your faith. He's going to try to steal the word. And you got a response for him. Listen, I am submitted to the Lord. Be gone. I don't need you. Get out of here. You don't have any authority over here. That's who you are. Yeah. That's who you are. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Growing up. Watching, starting to see all of these things develop. Jesus said, I pray that you would go forth and do what? Be a couch potato. No, go to church. No, you would multiply. Bring forth fruit. And then he says, not just fruit, much fruit, but then he also adds this, this caveat on the end, stand to your feet, that your fruit would remain. I don't want just fruit. I want fruit that remains. When, I, when my healing has been manifested, if I'm believing for healing, I don't have to believe for it because I know it's done. But if I'm believing, confessing for healing, I don't, I'm not going back in for another surgery. I'm not going back in so they can tell me I was just in remission. The devil is a liar. Yes. Amen. Lord, give me my marriage back. I'll be doggone if I'm going to let the devil in hell take it again. Come on, somebody. That's my fruit remaining. Glory to God. Join hands with somebody. Father, we thank you. It is in the name of Jesus. It is in the name of Jesus. We love you. We give you praise. If there's anybody in here that you have not, I don't know, you've not made the Lord. I can't believe it, but it could be. Jesus, the Lord of your life, you've never. I'm not talking about just I said a sinner's prayer. I'm talking about, you know what? You know that from this point on, it's me and God. From this point on, it's me and God. Just the two of us. When I say the two of us, I mean obviously the Godhead is just one, but you know what I'm saying. If you're not sure that, because that, I know, I know, I don't, and I'm not talking about feelings. I don't feel a thing. I know right, right, right. that if my life, this body ceased to pump air and the heart ceased to move, the brain ceased to function, before I hit the ground, I'm already with him. Right. If you don't know that certainty, and I feel it. If you don't know it, you can come see me this morning. Get out of your aisle. Get out of, get out of where you are and come see me. See, because there should be nothing, nothing that blocks your knowing. Your feelings shouldn't block your knowing. Doesn't mean I did everything right last night or right this morning. Probably thought something bad, said something bad. Whatever. 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 Because I know that he made me righteous. Not because I feel righteous. Now, if you're not certain, don't, don't let another day go by. Don't let another moment go by. Because none of us knows the end, what, when, our, when the time of our departure is. We don't know that. If you are born again, everybody born again, that's great. I like that. I like it when, when I can make an altar call like this and nobody answers. That's okay. Because that tells me you've dealt with these issues. Yes. And you're comfortable where God has you. The hand that you're holding needs your confidence. Would you join me in this prayer? And I'm going to turn it over to my wife. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and bless your name. The hand that is being held by the person on the left or the right is a walking, talking, living, breathing miracle. 
God, you have had to do, go through complexities. You've had to overcome obstacles, Lord God, in their mind, in their thinking, in their past. Some of them have a torrid past. Some of them have such a past that they just would not dare air it in public. Some of them have grown up in homes that have been so pleasant, so beautiful, untainted by the world, and they have, they have never known some of the things that we describe in the lives of others. But regardless of whether they are the former or the latter, I say this about one and all, that we are in constant need of a Savior that does great and mighty things in our life. We are in constant contact and dependence upon a Lord who is the high priest of all. He has the name which is above every name that will ever be named throughout eternity. So cancer cannot overcome it. Divorce can overcome it, Lord God. Sickness can overcome it. It does not matter the name. Mental illness, bipolar, Lord God, kidney disease. Does it matter the name? It only matters our position and we are in his care now. And I don't resist it. I embrace it. I let him place his arms of love around me so I don't have to figure out life on my own. And I extend this to my children and to my children's children. They will never know a day in hell. No matter how far they are outside of the kingdom this moment, you need to be getting in agreement with me now. No matter how far they are outside of the kingdom, no matter if I haven't seen my kids in years, no matter if I'm estranged from them, no matter, does not matter because they are there, you are there with them now. And I defy the armies of the aliens and turn them to flight and I say with all authority over my family and my children's children, which is my seed in the earth, you are blessed of God. You are born again and you are a kingdom citizen. Now get in the kingdom as fast as you can and live life and be free and multiply and replenish. In Jesus name, say amen to that. Give the Lord a great big praise. Can you do that?